Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. Let's talk about how to solve percent proportions. Now remember, the word percent literally means per 100, and in an example would be 15%, which is 15 per 100, or 15 hundredths. And as for this word proportion, a proportion is just when a ratio is set equal to another ratio, or a rate equals another rate. For example, if you set the ratio 3 to 6 equal to the ratio of 1 to 2, if this is true, they form a proportion. You can see that if you divide the top and bottom both by the same number of 3, we get an equivalent ratio. And when you see the word solving, we're typically looking to find an unknown value, and we're going to use a variable to represent that unknown. For example, if we have the ratio of 4 to 12, and that's equal to something over 24, and we don't know what that something is, we can write the variable x. And to get this equivalent ratio, we can multiply the left ratio by 2 on top and bottom and find out that x, or the unknown, is equal to 8. In order for the ratio of 4 to 12 to equal the ratio of x to 24, x must be 8 so that this does form a proportion. Throughout this video, there are three key types of problems that we're going to practice solving together. The first type of problem involves solving for the percent. We'll consistently set up each proportion as x over 100 is equal to a over b. x is always going to represent our percent, a is going to represent the part, and b is going to represent the whole. In these types of problems, the part and the whole will be given, and we need to solve for the percent, or x. For example, if we had x over 100 is equal to 7 over 25, then to get equivalent ratios, we'd have to multiply the 7 to 25 by 4 on top and bottom to find out that x is equal to 28. So the ratio of 7 to 25, or 7 out of 25, is 28%. The second type of problem that we'll be solving is when we're looking for the part. In these types of problems, we'll be given the percent, which is x, we'll be given the whole, which is b, and we'll need to solve for the part, which is a. For example, if we had 20 over 100 is equal to a over 10, then dividing 20 over 100 by 10 on top and bottom, we'll find out that a is equal to 2. So in order to make this proportion true, a would have to equal 2 here. 2 out of 10 is equivalent to 20%. The third and final type of problem you'll see in this video is when we're looking for the whole. In these types of problems, we'll be given the percent, which is x, we'll be given the part, which is a, and we're going to look for the whole, which is b. If we had the proportion 25 over 100 is equal to 75 over b, then if you multiply 25 over 100 by 3 on top and bottom, we find out that b is equal to 300. Given that 75 is the part and it represents 25%, then the whole must be 300. 75 out of 300 represents 25%. To find a lot of success with these types of problems, I strongly encourage you to try to remember what you see on the screen here. Both the ratios on the left and the right are part to whole, and there's always going to be 100 underneath the percent. So in the rest of this video, we'll do a couple practice problems where we find the percent, which is x, then we'll go into solving for the part, or a, and then we'll finish up with just solving some problems where we find the whole, or b. Throughout each of the problems that we'll be solving together, these three variables will take turns being the ones that we're solving for. And keep in mind that this 100 is going to be here at the bottom in every proportion. Let's practice finding the percent. A is the part, B is the whole, and X is the percent. Let's practice finding X. The problem is 15 is what percent of 24? Now another version of our proportion that you might find useful is this X over 100 is equal to is over of. Try saying it to yourself a few times. Is over of, is over of, is over of. If you can remember that, looking for these keywords can really help you set up your proportion. Starting off, we have 15 is, so is is going to represent a, or the part. The word what means we're looking for something, so what percent will be x percent, or x over 100. And we're going to group the of 24 and say that b equals 24. Setting up our proportion, we can write x over 100 is equal to 15 over 24. Since 15 and 24 aren't relatively prime, we should divide them by their GCF, which is going to be 3. Simplifying this, we get x to 100 is equal to 5 to 8. Now to figure out how many times 8 goes into 100, we should divide 100 by 8 to figure out that value. Using some long division, we can see here that that value is going to be 12.5. Given that 8 times 12.5 is equal to 100, then 5 times 12.5 must get us the value of x. Multiplying 12.5 by 5, we find out that x is equal to 62.5. We now know that 15 is 62.5% of 24. Let's try another one. What percent of 24 is 4? Let's group the what percent together because that's our unknown, so we can write this as x percent or x over 100. We'll group the of and 24 together and say that b equals 24 because of represents the whole. 
and we'll group is and for together to say that a is equal to 4. That's our part. Our proportion is going to be x to 100 is equal to 4 to 24. And simplifying our ratio to the right, we can rewrite the proportion as x to 100 is equal to 1 to 6. To figure out how many times 6 goes into 100, we'll do 100 divided by 6 and find out that this value is going to be 16 and 4 sixths, or 16 and 2 thirds. Because this decimal goes on forever, I recommend using the fraction version of 16 and 2 thirds. If 6 times 16 and 2 thirds equals 100, then 1 times 16 and 2 thirds must equal x. Therefore, x is equal to 16 and 2 thirds, and we can say that 16 and 2 thirds percent of 24 is equal to 4. Now that we've practiced finding the percentage, let's try finding the part now. The problem we have here is what is 15% of 80? Remember, here's the proportion we're trying to set up where A is the part, B is the whole, and X represents the percent. Here's our good old is over of, and since we're solving for the part, we're going to be looking for this A value, or the is is going to represent our unknown. What is our unknown? And that's going to go with the is, the of is going to go with 80, and we have 15%. A is our unknown, X is equal to 15 because that's our percent, and B is equal to 80, or our whole. Our proportion is going to be 15 to 100 is equal to A to 80. Simplifying the ratio on the left by dividing by 5 on top and bottom, we can write 3 to 20 is equal to A to 80. Lucky for us, 20 goes into 80 exactly 4 times, so 3 times 4 must equal A. To make this proportion true, A must equal 12, and we can say that 12 is 15% of 80. Let's try another one. What is 4.5% of 1,000? What is is our unknown, and we're going to use A to represent that. 4.5% means that we're going to say that X is equal to 4.5, and we're going to group of 1,000 together, and our B value, or our whole, is going to be 1,000. Our proportion is 4.5 to 100 is equal to A to 1,000. Since 100 goes into 1,000 exactly 10 times, then 4.5 times 10 gets us that A is equal to 45. Here we can say that 45 is 4.5% of 1,000. Now that we've practiced finding the percent and the part, let's try finding the whole. A is our part, B is our whole, and X is our percent. Let's find the bottom of the right ratio. For this problem, we have 3 is 20% of what number? Feel free to use this version of the proportion instead with the is over of, and we're going to solve for the of. Let's start by grouping the 3 is and A will equal 3. 20% means that x is equal to 20, and we can group the of what number, and this is going to be our whole, or b. Our proportion will be 20 to 100 is equal to 3 to b, and simplifying the ratio on the left by their GCF, we can rewrite the proportion as 1 to 5 is equal to 3 to b. Seeing that 1 times 3 is equal to 3 on top, we can say that 5 times 3 is equal to b. b is equal to 15, so we can say that 3 is 20% of 15. Here's one last example. We have 42 is 60% of what number? Grouping the 42 and is right next to each other, we can say that A is equal to 42. The 60% represents that X is equal to 60. And for the of what number, we're going to use the variable B again. Writing our proportion, we'll say that 60 to 100 is equal to 42 to B. Simplifying the ratio to the left by their GCF, we can rewrite the proportion as 3 to 5 is equal to 42 to B. To figure out how many times 3 goes into 42, you can use long division and say 42 divided by 3 is equal to 14. Seeing that 3 goes into 42 14 times, that means 5 has to go into B 14 times. Seeing that 14 times 5 is equal to 70, we can conclude that B is equal to 70 and say that 42 is 60% of 70. Hopefully tying this all together, there are really four parts to every proportion. On one of the tops, you'll always have the variable x, which represents our percent, and this one's always going to be on top of 100. That's never going to change. And for the other numerator, we'll always have this variable a, and we'll look for the keyword of is to help us find it, and this represents the part. And finally, underneath the variable a, we'll have the variable b, and we'll look for the keyword of of to help us find it. This is always going to represent our whole relative to the part. In all of the percent proportion problems, you'll either be solving for x, a, or b. And that wraps up this video on helping you understand how to solve percent proportion problems. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I encourage you to do so so you know when I upload new videos to help you out. And keep in mind that you'll be supporting a good cause. Anyways, thanks again for watching, and keep up the great work as always, and I'll see you in the next one.